Hello again everyone, it's no secret that I really enjoy testing Sigma's new eye series of lenses and 20mm happens to be one of my favourite focal lengths on a full frame camera so I'm especially happy to be presenting you with this new offering from Sigma, their 20mm f2 DG DNC for contemporary. This is part of Sigma's eye series lens lineup of very high quality lenses in smaller but equally high quality bodies and its ultra wide angle of 20mm means you're getting a super wide field of view here on a full frame camera body but not so wide that it becomes difficult to compose your picture and an aperture as bright as f2 lets in plenty of light for shooting indoors or in darker situations. It's going to be available for Sony E-mount mirrorless cameras as well as L-mount cameras and its price will be in the description below and pinned to the top of the comments section. Let's start by looking at the build quality. Those of you who have already seen one of my reviews of the Sigma i-series lenses will have noticed that I've long since exhausted my vocabulary of superlatives in describing their build quality, second to none, ultra luxurious, like they're carved out of granite, well take your pick with this line of lenses as they really are wonderful to handle, solid, metallic, tightly assembled and looking pretty gorgeous too, although that bit is a matter of opinion. There's a thin weather sealing gasket around the rear lens mount and Sigma claimed that the lens is designed to be dust and splash resistant. We are treated to a nicely designed auto manual focus switch here and that is followed by a simple metallic aperture ring with enjoyably positive clicks to it. That's followed by one of the smoothest turning manual focus rings in the universe which works together with a focus motor for a huge level of precision in use. As you can see here though, the lens exhibits fairly strong focus breathing, zooming in quite noticeably as you focus more closely to your subject. The autofocus motor is quick, silent and accurate as you can see here. People go crazy in the comment section when I don't mention this but yes, when shooting in autofocus continuous mode on your Sony camera it focuses even a little faster. The lens comes with a standard lens cap that clips on as normal but it also comes with a secondary lens cap which is magnetic and attaches itself right onto the front. A magnetic lens cap holder is available separately which you can attach to your camera bag or somewhere else about your person if you fancy doing things a little differently. The lens also comes with a very high quality and perfectly machined metallic lens hood. Its filter thread size is 62mm wide and it does not have image stabilisation. Overall, as I've said before, this line of Sigma lenses possibly have some of the highest build quality of any autofocus lens I have yet tested. They are addictively good to handle and definitely don't have the feel of a lens that's being mass produced, which is one of the reasons they cost more than your average third party optic. Alright, well more importantly, let's take a look at image quality. I'll start by testing this on a full frame camera, my Sony a7R 3 with its 42 megapixel sensor. In camera corrections are turned on. Right away from f2, we see almost perfect image quality in the middle, razor sharpness and excellent contrast. Over in the corners, we see a very dark image, but still, right into the edges we are seeing truly excellent sharpness and contrast there too. That is very impressive. Stop down to f4 for a bit more brightness in the corners and the lens stays this sharp down to f11 where diffraction begins to cause a little softening. Overall though, apart from that corner darkness, it is a truly excellent performance. This is one of the sharpest 20mm lenses available, if not the sharpest. Ok, well let's look at the performance on an APS-C camera now, my little 24 megapixel Sony A5100. In the middle of the image we're seeing absolutely perfect sharpness still, the corner image quality is just a little softer but still very good indeed. Those corners still look a little dark but thankfully nowhere near as bad as they were on full frame as you'd expect. The lens stays this sharp down to about f4 but f5.6 seems to see just a tiny improvement in resolution. Again, the lens stays this sharp down to f11. So on an APS-C camera, the lens performs fantastically well also. Ok, well let's turn off in-camera corrections and take a look at distortion and vignetting now. Ouch, we are seeing plenty of barrel distortion here, topped off by a dreadful amount of vignetting. Those corners really are so dark. At f2.8, f4 and f5.6, 
Those corners begin to brighten up a lot, but the vignette never really totally goes away. You'd definitely want to keep in-camera corrections on with this lens, although as you can see, your camera's vignetting correction, at f2 anyway, seems only to go so far. Let's move on and have a look at close-up image quality now. The lens can focus down to about 20 centimeters to get you a nice, close look at smaller subjects. At f2, close-up image quality remains very good, although sharpness and contrast are just a bit lower than before. Stop down to f2.8 and they truly become excellent again. Let's take a look at how the lens performs against bright light. An important question on an ultra-wide angle lens that will be catching the sun in your images. Flaring and glaring are kept to a minimum here and contrast remains very strong when bright lights are in or around the image frame. While we're working in the dark, let's see about coma levels now. Bright points of light in the edges of your images see a touch of coma smearing, but it's still much less than average for an f2 lens. Stop down to f2.8 and anything that was there has quickly gone away. Let's zoom out and look for some sun stars now. They are nowhere to be seen until you stop down to about f8. Stop down as far as f16 though and it's officially party time. Now let's take a look at the quality of this lens's bokeh. More good news here, it is virtually always lovely and soft, I wasn't able to identify any noticeable issues here. And finally, related to bokeh comes longitudinal chromatic aberration. At f2, we see just the mildest bit of colour fringing on out of focus highlights, uh, stop down just a little to f2.8 and it goes right away. Overall, well, I quickly fell in love with this lens's build quality, its class-leading sharpness, its nice colours, good contrast, smooth bokeh, and good close-up image quality. The only thing I really didn't appreciate was its very heavy vignetting, which makes itself keenly felt at f2, whether or not your in-camera corrections are turned on. You'll want to brighten those corners in editing. If you can cope with that, though, then it's a truly awesome piece of optical engineering that comes Highly recommended. Thanks for watching everyone, I hope you enjoyed this review and I hope you find all my reviews helpful. If you do then do check out my Patreon page down in the description below where you'll find all kinds of exclusive content, special videos and whatnot for supporters and well, you get a nice warm fuzzy feeling inside of you for supporting the channel and keeping things moving here. Ciao for now.